Hi, and welcome to this video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at the UiPath Assistant, which is a tool that most users of attended robots will use in their daily work. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm here at my Windows workstation. And if I go to the system tray, I can see that I have UiPath Assistant installed. The UiPath Assistant is basically an application that helps you connect your Windows PC to the automations that you have access to in Orchestrator, and then run those automations using the robot service that you have on your Windows PC. So in order to use any of the automations, we need to connect our Assistant to Orchestrator. So if I open up my Orchestrator, I can see that in my default folder, and that is what we'll connect to in this video, we don't have any automations. In a later video where I talk about modern folders versus classic folders, which is a completely different topic, I will connect using uh, credentials from the assistant, but in this one we'll connect using a standard robot and the machine key. Uh, if I go to my tenant and go to machines, we can see that I don't have any machines defined in here. And I need to create the machine that I want to connect from inside the orchestrator. So I'll add a standard machine, and I'll need to enter the name of the PC that I want to connect. And I can get that by viewing the properties for my machine. And this one is called Yeppe Desk Home. And I'll copy that. And I'll insert it into this field right here. Then I'll click Provision. And now I have created the machine. If I go to the default folder, I will need to create a robot that will be sort of the representation of my assistant inside of Orchestrator. So if I click the plus sign and click Standard Robot, I can select what machine is it that I want to connect with, and that's the machine I just created. And I can call the robot, I'll just call it Yebe Desktop. And uh, I'll need to enter the domain name and username of the user on the PC that I want the robot to run under. And that will be Yebe Desk, Desk Home, and the username is just Yebe. And I'll click Create. So now I have a robot. I need to add this robot to an environment in order to run automations. So in the default folder still, I'll create a new environment. And I'll just call this one Demos and click Create. And when I do that, I'm prompted if I want to add any of the robots to that environment. And I'll add the Yeppet desktop robot to the environment. So now we've done everything we need to do in Orchestrator in order to connect our machine. What we uh, can do is if we go to Tenant and Machines, we can see that over here there's a button called Copy Machine Key to Clipboard, and we'll use that in just a second. In my Assistant, I go to the Preferences menu, and then I go to Orchestrator Settings. And here we can see that there are two methods of connecting. And as I said, in this video we're not going to use the uh, Credentials method to sign in and use modern folders and all of those things. We'll do that in a later video. We'll use the Machine Key method, and that requires us to enter two uh, details the orchestrator URL, and I have that in here already. And I don't think this uh, machine key is valid, so I'll delete it. And I'll go and copy the new machine key and paste that in. And when I click Connect Now, with a little luck, this button should go green. And it says Connected and Licensed, and that means we are connected. So if I close the uh, Preferences window, we can see that our system is now green, and that's good. It also says that there are no processes available. So why not? Well, if we go to the default folder, and this is the folder that our robot is connected to, and go into the Automations tab, we can see that we don't have any automations here. If I add one, and we'll add uh, the Add Numbers uh, process that I have, and I'll give it the display name of Add Numbers. Uh, we can see at the bottom here that this process takes two parameters, first number and second number. And what the automation does is it takes these two numbers, adds them together, and then displays the result in a message box. So if I click Create, in just a second, we should see that uh, automation pop up in our assistant. And while we wait for that, I'll add another one. And that'll be the picture-in-picture -picture demo that you may have seen in a different video. And I'll just click Create. And in just a few seconds, we should see them pop up over here. There we go. So now our assistant is configured and connected. But what can we do with it? Well, we have this list of automations, and this is a short one. We only have two. But if we had like 50, maybe, then we could use what's called the launch pad. 
And the launch pad you get by clicking this expand and collapse button up here. And what you can do is you can add the most important automations, and I'll add both of mine to the launch pad. And instead of having a list of 50, then you'll get sort of a shortcut to the 10 or 12 most important automations over here. I don't have that many automations, so I'll collapse the launch pad again. At the bottom, you can do a search. So if I type add, it will find the add numbers. And if I uh, type uh, picture, well, then it'll find the picture and picture automation up here. You can also click this little icon, and this is absolutely useless. But you can change what the little avatar should be down in the left corner. And you can even call it a name, and mine is called Bob. At the top of our assistant, we have another tab called Reminders. And this is not a scheduling of the automations. It's just a reminder you can add so that you are told that now you need to run this automation. So it's 7.52 right now. I will add a reminder for the add numbers, and I'll get reminded at 7.53. I'll click Save, and in just you know a few seconds, we should get a reminder that we need to run the add numbers automation. In the meantime, we'll go back into the Preferences menu. And let me just move these around a little bit. We can see that there's a couple of cosmetic options here at the top. We can select which theme do we want to use. I'm using the dark theme. You could choose the light theme if you like that. I don't, so I won't. Or you could choose the auto theme that will switch between the light and the dark during the day or during the night. You can also switch the language. Uh, there's quite a few. There's been more added, it seems. Uh, we're still uh, missing Danish in here, but uh, I'll live with that. And now we can see, actually, that our reminder popped up to yeah, tell us to run the Add Numbers automation. So if I click the Run button, then I get the result of zero. And let me get back to that in just a second. In the Keyboard Shortcuts menu, you can set up uh, Keyboard Shortcuts. And I'll set up one for the Add Numbers automation. And we'll just say Control uh, G. And then we'll just move on to the last page in the settings. And those are the settings that we've looked at already. At the bottom, there's one where you can decide what log level do you want your robots to log at. And you can change that if you want. So these are basically the options. I'll close those again. And um, before we press Control G to run our add numbers using the keyboard shortcut, let me just show you the details for this process. Here we can see that this process has actually some parameters that we can set, uh, as we saw inside Orchestrator. So if I add 10 to the first number and 5 to the second one, and click Save. If I now press Control G, it'll run the process and give us the result, which is 15. So when everything is set up, the Assistant is a very useful tool from which you can run all of the uh, usually attended automations that you have access to. And you can assign shortcut keys, as we just saw. And even if uh, the assistant is out of sight and we press Control G, then the automation will still run and give us the result. So that's really a very quick tour of the UiPath Assistant. I hope you found it useful. As I mentioned earlier, I will be making another video where I look at modern folders versus classic folders. That video will be coming out in a couple of weeks. It's probably going to be the most boring video I've ever made it's also going to be probably the most important one, because modern folders is what lies ahead. So hopefully you'll subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, give it a like, and you can hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of new videos coming out. See you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.